Let us take a closer look at this failed attempt because in doing so we will learn a lot about how data is actually passed when we make function calls in C. So we said that this parameter ants is not the same as this local variable even though both have the same name ants and both have the same type int. And we actually saw this in the Python tutor visualization where you saw that this local variable was part of the uh, main function and this other local variable was part of the min function and we said that they weren't linked. So we want to understand this term a little bit more precisely and the reason these two variables are not linked is because in C arguments are always passed by value and it's very important that we understand what this technical term means very very precisely. So here in the main is where we call the min function right? and this is this variable ants that is going to correspond to the third parameter of the min function. At this point in the code the value that is sitting inside this local variable ants is copied into this parameter. So it's very important to understand that the parameter gets a copy of the value. This is what we mean by when we say arguments are passed by value. You don't get the original variable itself, you get a copy of whatever value was sitting in there. Now obviously if you only have a copy of the value, modifying this variable is not going to affect the original variable. It's as if I took a photocopy of a document and you took that photocopy and tried modifying it for example by coloring it or cutting the paper. Obviously those actions are not going to modify my original document. You are modifying a copy. Now in this case when this function call uh, actually happened this variable was uninitialized. The Python tutor visualization shows this with a question mark. It actually has some value but we just don't know what that is and that question mark is being copied over here and that's a little bit hard to see in the visualization but it would have been easier if we for example had initialized this variable. Suppose we had initialized it to zero. Then when we had got to this point in the visualization we would not have seen a question mark we would have seen the value zero. And when we call this function at the time when each of these other parameters uh, got their values from the uh, arguments this value that was sitting in here the zero that was sitting in here would have been copied over into this parameter. So this is as I said what we mean by pass by value and that's not what we want. We really wanted at this point to give this variable to min so that it could modify its value and we're not able to do that because we're simply passing a copy of the value. But it turns out in C you can pass the address of this variable. The address is simply where in memory this variable is stored. Sort of like how your address is where you live. And you can pass that value, the value of this variable's address, but then you can't just call it ans, you have to write ampersand ans. And the way we read this is address of this variable ans. So wherever in memory this lives, that address is going to be passed to this function. That address has a value, a copy of that value will be passed, but now this function min will know where this variable lives and we will see that by appropriately modifying this min function, it can modify this variable. Now this syntax ampersand ans 
is actually used uh, anytime you want a function to modify a value. So just as a quick aside, when we call the printf function to print the value of ants, we just give it the value ants. But if we wanted to read a value into this variable, for example, from the keyboard, then there is another function called scanf. And once again, you say percent %d if you want to read an integer in decimal form, but then you give it ampersand ants, just like we have done here. So we are giving the scanf function the address of our variable ants so that it can write a value into it, whatever value the user typed from the keyboard. So returning to our problem, what we will have to also do is modify this third argument type because now we're no longer passing an int, we are passing the address of an int. And the general rule is the address of a variable of type t has type t star. So instead of saying int ants, we have to say int star ants. So this ants is now a variable of type int star, which we read as a pointer to an int. So this ants is of type int star, pointer to int. And note that that's different to this ants, which is of type int. So this time, although the two variables have the same name, they are of different types. And you will see this in the visualization. And most importantly in the visualization, you will see that by giving it the address of this variable when you are calling the function, this pointer ants, that is int star, this is now set up, it is pointing to this ANS which is of type int. So in the main, ANS is of type int, but in the min function, ANS is a pointer to an int. Now that we have a pointer to this variable, we can modify that data. And the way we modify that data is not by changing the value of ANS, but by changing the value of star ants. And this is called dereferencing the pointer ants. Basically, star ants is the int that ants points to. Remember that this ants is a pointer. It is pointing to this variable, which happens to be called ants also. But when we say star ants, we are saying that whatever int this points to, that's uh, int's value should change to whatever we have on the right hand side. So this is going to allow us to modify the data that is sitting inside the main function. So the main function is going to basically uh, have remote control access to data that is living inside another function and the reason it has this powerful access is when the main function called it, it surrendered the address of that variable. And by giving out the address of that variable, uh, you are allowing that other function to modify the data that lives in this variable. And of course, that was our intention when we called this min function. So let us now see all these pieces together in the visualization on Python Tutor. So here is our main, and you notice that we are calling this uh, ANS, uh, the address of ANS, we have passed that, and we have an int star ANS. And every time we use star ANS, so this is going to change the value of whatever ANS is pointing to. That's if we use ANS on the star ANS on the left hand side of an assignment statement. Uh, you notice we can also use star ants as an expression. So this is whatever the value is of the int that ants is pointing to. So let's see all this in the visualization. So we get started, we initialize our array, and we leave this variable uninitialized. So it's still got this question mark. Now we call the main function. Right now everything is uninitialized. But when we hit next, everything gets properly initialized. 
So please remember that when you call functions, make sure that all your parameters are initialized. If they are not initialized, that's usually the sign of something badly wrong. So n is initialized to 3, x is pointing to that array, and ans is pointing to this variable which happens to be uninitialized. But this ans itself is initialized. It is initialized to the address of this variable. Now n is not less than or equal to 0, so we're going to skip that. And the meaning of this statement is change the value of the integer that ans is pointing to to x0. So let's first figure out what x0 is. x0 is 1. And so whatever this uh, uh, pointer is pointing to, its value has to change to 1. Well, it is currently uninitialized, but when we click next, its value changes to 1. So we are controlling the data that's living inside the main function because we were given its address. So this link is allowing us remote control access to that location in memory. Now we proceed, we examine all the elements in the array other than position 0. So we start i at 1 and we ask is x1 less than the value that ans is currently pointing to? Well, ans is pointing to the value 1. So is x1, which is minus 3, is that less than 1? Yes, it is. So we're going to go into the if condition and we're going to say the new value that ans should point to is x1. So the new value of this is going to change from 1 to minus 3. And then we will proceed with the loop. I will increase to 2, which is still less than n. And now we ask if x2 is smaller than this. It's not. So we will skip this and move to the next value. And now I will increase to 3, which means we are no longer in the loop. And we will return 0 to indicate that all was well. Now this function is going to exit. We will print the value 0 to indicate there were no errors. And we will print ans, this local variable, whose value has been initialized by the function that, call, that we called, the min function. And so when we print its value, we get the correct minimum. It's absolutely crucial to understand that arguments are always passed by value. Even when we are giving the address of some variable, we are passing the value of that address. So this statement is always true. Arguments in C are always passed by value. Of course, when you give the address of a variable, that function has the opportunity to modify the data. The only time it won't be able to do it is if you say this is a const int star, which is similar to this uh, statement. In that case, you can read the value at that location, but you can't modify it. In this case, we didn't say const int star, we just said int star because we really wanted this min function to modify the data in the ans variable. We will explore uh, these ideas of pointers in more detail in the next few lectures.